So now let's try to do a little bit of balancing. And again, the whole goal of balancing is to make sure that the number of each type of atoms is the same on both sides. So uh, there's a lot of homework problems. I think I have a balancing sheet with like over a hundred things to balance. If you can balance everything on, on that homework sheet, then there's really nothing I can surprise you with. There's one of every type there. So usually what I do is make a list of each type of atom I have on both sides. All right, so I have A's and B's here. A and B and then I'll do like a little scan there's a lot of different tricks you can use and on the balancing sheet they I'll go over some of those as well but usually I kind of scan the bottom and see who has the biggest number of subscripts and then start there it's one way to do it um, so I have two B's so what I'm gonna do if I have two B's on this side I'm gonna add a coefficient in front here so now I have two B's over there I have two A's on this side and if I add a coefficient of two over here now I have two so now I'm balanced I have two A plus B2 um, yields a2 plus 2b. So that one's nice and balanced. Let's try another one. Now you can pause this video and try to balance these on your own and see how you do. That's perfectly fine. Here I have h and o and h and o on this side. And if you find that you're bouncing back and forth between like the re reactant side and product side, then you're, you're, doing, you're doing it right. <laughs> so here I have two h's, I have two h's. Now I have two o's on the left, so I'm going to put a 2 in front over here. So now I have two O's. When I put that coefficient in front, that changes my hydrogens to four, because remember you're multiplying the coefficient and the subscripts. So now I have four hydrogens. So when I go over here, I need to put a two in front. So now I have four hydrogens and I have two oxygens and I should be balanced. And you can always go back and check two hydrogen, four hydrogens, two oxygens, four hydrogens, two oxygens, and you're balanced. Um, this one. All right, so for, for this one, we have Si, Cl, H, and O. Okay, so I would probably start here at four chlor uh, chlorine, so I would put four over here. Yep, my chlorine's up. Now when I did that, I changed the number of hydrogens. So I have four hydrogens. So now I'll go to the left side and balance some hydrogens. I'll put a two in front of here, which gives me four. And that changes my oxygen to two. And then I check my oxygen on the right side. I've got two. I've got one SI. I've got one SI over here and four. And then you check and you should be balanced. So I've got one SI. I've got four CLs. Over here I have one SI. I have four CLs. I have four hydrogens, two oxygens, four hydrogens, two oxygens, four hydrogens, and two oxygens, and we're balanced. Now, the next one is a little bit trickier because you have a lot of um, polyatomic ions, and sometimes if you, it's easier to keep those polyatomic ions together. Instead of taking this um, phosphoric acid and splitting up into H, P, and O, you can keep, keep that PO4 together because you have a PO4 on the left here, you have a PO4 on the right, you have that phosphate ion, it's not coming apart. Same with the cyanide ion. You have cyanide, you have cyanide. So just keep it together. Treat it like it's one unit. So here I have H, I have PO4. Just keep it together and balance it together. I have uh, sodium and I have cyanide. And I have the same thing over here. And try to balance it that way and it makes it a lot easier than having to split it up by, um, by atom and doing it that way. So I have three sodiums here. I'll just start with three sodiums. I'll put a three on this side. So I have three sodiums. That changes it to three cyanides. And so if I come over here and put three cyanides, I have three hydrogens, three cyanides. I have three sodiums. I have one phosphate. Um, so if I, where did I, and then I have three hydrogens over there already, and I have one phosphate. Oh, that was really quick. Okay, so what do we do? We started here with the sodium, um, and I put a three on this side for the sodium. That changed the cyanide. So I went over here and added a three for the cyanide. I checked and, and I could see that I have three hydrogens. I already have three hydrogens. So then I checked the phosphate. I have one phosphate ion. Now I have one phosphate ion over here. And so you're all balanced. So again, you're, you're kind of, you put a coefficient, see how that changes one thing, go to the other side, change it to match, and bounce back and forth. If you keep doing that, then you're doing it right. Uh, just a couple more here. 
This is a combustion reaction. Combustion means you have a you know, carbon, hydrogen, um, sometimes you have other things in this compound as well, but you're reacting it in, with oxygen and you always get the same products, carbon dioxide and water. We're gonna talk about combustion reactions again in the next section when we really break down different types of reactions. Uh, whenever you have a combustion reaction, it's easier to balance if you do it in this order, C, H, and then O. C, H, and O. So if you follow those, uh, the Cho method, it should be easier for you. Notice how you have oxygen by itself over here. Um, it's best to save that to the end to, uh, to balance. So if you start off here with the carbon, you have two carbons on this side. So go over here and add two carbons over there. Now normally if you're following the other method, you would then balance the, the oxygen, but we're gonna skip two hydrogen. I have four hydrogens on the left. I need to have four hydrogens on the right, so I'm going to put a two in front of it. So now I have four hydrogens, two carbons. Over here I have two carbons, four hydrogens. How many oxygens do I have total on this side? So I have two different compounds, so I have to add them all up. So I have two times four, uh, two gives me four, and two times one gives me two. So I have six oxygens on the right. I want to make sure I have six oxygens on the left. So I'm just going to add a three here and then double check. I have two carbons, I have four hydrogens, I have six oxygens, I have two carbons, I have four hydrogens, and I have four, five, six oxygens. So we're balanced over there. The next one is um, a little bit tricky. All right, so you have aluminum hydrogen and chlorine. Now this one, I want, I want to emphasize that balancing is uh, good to do in pencil because sometimes you have to go back and change your answers and that's just the approach. It's like an iterative approach. You could do it the first time and then you keep, you kind of go back and you, sometimes you have to change your numbers. It doesn't mean you're doing it wrong. It doesn't mean you're doing it wrong. You're doing it right. So if I started off here with chlorine, I see I have a three in front of there. So I'm going to put a three in front of here. So I have three chlorines, right, and three chlorines. But now look at my hydrogens. I have three hydrogens, and again, I have this three-two situation where no matter what I put um, in front of here, I'm gonna end up with an even number. So if I multiply this guy by two and multiply this one by three, I'm gonna get the least common multiple. So now I have six hydrogens. I'm gonna have to change this, and I'm gonna have to change this one, and I'm gonna have to change this one. So now I have six hydrogens over here. I have six chlorines, so I'm gonna to wanna to put a two in front of here to get six chlorines. I have two aluminums, so I wanna get two aluminums over here. All right, and then check your, your answers to make sure that they are um, the, the smallest group possible. Yeah, I can't divide these by anything, so that's fine. Um, so sometimes, yep, you're gonna to have to go back and erase your numbers, and that's okay. And I think this is our last one. This one's probably the trickiest one of all. It's another combustion reaction, so you have oxygen and then you have your um, products are always the same. And really it's this part that's changing, but you're always, always gonna have one reactant will be oxygen and the other, uh, your products will be carbon dioxide and water, as long as you have complete combustion. We'll talk about that when we get to our combustion reactions. All right, so this one, carbon, we'll start with carbons. I have two carbons, I'm gonna add two over here. And then I'm gonna to go to hydrogens. I have six hydrogens, so I'm gonna add a three over here. So six hydrogens and six hydrogens on that side. And then when I get to my oxygens, this is where things get funny. So I have two times two gives me four, and then three times one gives me three. So again, when you have these combustion reactions, you're gonna have oxygen in two different places. I end up with seven, which is an odd number. There's no way that I can put a single number in front of O2 and multiply it by two, a whole number, and get an odd number, right? It's, it's gonna be even no matter what I want, whatever, whatever I do. Um, so what I'm gonna do is put seven here, right? If I put a seven here, now I have 14. I have twice as much oxygen as I need for anything else. And so now I'm gonna go back, since I have twice as much, and I'm gonna multiply every, whoops, I'm gonna multiply everybody else by two. So I'm gonna put a two here. I'm gonna keep that alone, right? Cause I already have twice as much as I need. And now I'm gonna put a four here and a six here. So what I did was I, I oxygen, I'm gonna have twice as much oxygen. So I wanna get twice as much as everybody else. And then go back and make sure that you're okay. 
So two times carbon gives me four. Two times um, six hydrogens is 12. Over here I have four for my carbon. I have eight for my oxygen. I have 12 for my hydrogens plus another six for my oxygen. So I have 14. So, uh, so that worked, which is great. Um, let's try it. I'm going to show you that one more time. I mean, you can always go back and watch it again. But what did we do? All right, so we started off with hydrogens, right? We put a two in front of here. We had two and two. And then we went to hydrogens and we had six. So we put a three over there to get six hydrogens. And then when we got to the oxygens, we had seven, which is an odd number. Another way to think about that is if I, put, if I multiplied this by seven over two, right? Seven over two times two gives me seven but I don't want to have fractions there. So what you can do then is multiply everybody by two to get rid of that fraction. So two and then two times seven over two just gives me seven. Times two here is gonna be four, times two here is gonna be six. And you end up exactly where you were before. And then just double check that all your things work out. I got four, 12, and 14. And over here I have four, eight, 12, and, and six plus eight gives me 14. So you're good. So there's two different ways to think about the same same situation. You can either double it ahead of time, as I did the first time, or you can make that little fraction and then multiply everybody by two to get rid of it. But you want whole numbers in your final answer. So be, make sure you practice balancing a lot. Um, we're gonna it's gonna be kind of embedded in a lot of problems from now on. So make sure you do a lot of those homework problems.